What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, November 6th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the new face of video games, Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. What's up, Greg? Not much. What's up with you? I'm tired, man. It's been a week. It has like, been a week. That we've is had true. A, we I had, guess. We've had the floodgates open as far as like content that we've recorded throughout the week sure. that we've had to yeah. hold because of embargoes and stuff. But mm-hmm. now, like everybody, everybody gets the content, right? The content's out there. The millions of videos that it felt like we did over the course of the week are finally out and available. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, there is yet another PlayStation 5 embargo that has lifted. You can go right now to kindoffunny.com slash PS5. Catch the PS I Love You XOXO review of the PlayStation 5. Catch the Gamescast review of Spider-Man Miles Morales. Catch the Gamescast review of Astro's Playroom. Catch my first time ever turning on my PlayStation 5 and walking you through it. Catch me trying to figure out if I can get PT to go on a PlayStation 5. And if you couldn't catch all that or you already caught all that, guess what? This afternoon, we are recording more embargoed content then tomorrow is extra life and guess what's happening on sunday we are recording more embargoed content (laughs) and guess what's probably happening early in the week that i'm not thinking about right now more embargoed content it is that time of year yeah you know you're talking talking about being tired and by the way since we're gonna we're i don't have specific plans i guess but while we're here remember our playstation 5s were sent by playstation 4 review i'll just disclose there in case we eventually get into it um yeah, bless you're talking about being tired. I was like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, wait, why are you tired? And then I forgot, of course, it's been a, a hellish week for everybody. But yeah, I've been cooking since 445. I've been up in the YouTube oh, comments, God. putting things on playlists, putting tweets out, whoop, 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 drinking a lot of boost on. I went oh. and got eight donuts today. Oh, man. Uh, and I should mention, too, <laughs> that the Apex Legends update came out yesterday or the day before. I, I got to it last night, started playing uh-huh. it. And man, what a game like that apex legends is a game that keeps on gaming where like the constant (laughs) the the content never stops there's a new map now olympus and it looks really cool uh and i i I made the mistake actually you know what i'm not gonna call it a mistake because i did it very purposely i stayed up late last night playing that thing and oh man what a good time what now that you're not playing are you playing your playstation 5 i assume right yeah i'm playing everything on my playstation 5 now so now that we can talk about this what is your hours counted on apex because of course the playstation Ooh. 5 tracks your hours played in video games it's... now for all the obsessive weirdos like us which i know you are because you're watching and listening to this show so now you can jump in there and actually see those numbers which is always impressive yeah which we turn on i haven't checked dc universe online i gotta get in there and see what my final clock's at now i think i don't think my apex legends hour count oh, is probably like see. super high uh oh, okay. compared to like some of the like Overwatch, I think I'm at 300 something hours. And then GTA 5 was the one where I was like, okay, yeah, like I'm at 500 something hours in that. But that also doesn't count my PS3 hours, which were also mm. in the hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like, I probably overall put around, like, I imagine 800 something hours into GTA 5. Let me see. Well, here. while you look for that and look it up, let us get the show started proper because, ladies and gentlemen, there is no time to waste. Uh, it's a PlayStation 5 blowout. We're going to run you through reviews around the internet of what people are saying on top of what we're saying, and then we're going to answer some of your questions. Uh, there are a ton of delays we'll run you through as well, and then it looks like Fortnite may have found a way to weasel its way back onto iOS. We're going to cover all of this and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash games. You can give us your questions, your comments, your concerns, your squad up requests. And of course, you can get the show ad free and you can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. Hold on, I'm fighting a sneeze. It's not going to hit it. me. Fight it. I'm at uh, 233 hours in Apex Legends. Damn, that's now, good. that's a good number. Guess how many hours I'm in uh, Ghost of Sh- Tsushima? 132. I'm looking at it right now and I can't believe it. 88. 88. <laughs> Close. Oh. 95. Damn. Yeah. We're all close to uh, if you have no bucks, toss our way at patreon.com slash kind of funny games. No big deal. You can catch the show on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You can catch it on Rooster Teeth. You can catch it on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday. If you need it more immediate, you can watch it as we record it. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, just like Googs9 is, PJ Julian is, and the Lou55 are, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you are wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody listening and watching later. Housekeeping for you. I alluded to it, but let's say it again. Extra Life is happening. Uh, Basically, it started. If you're watching this later, it's already going on. Let's just say because today on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games at 1 p.m. We will start hosting the community. Uh, the community will be streaming, obviously, for Extra Life, if you don't know. 
Extra Life is the annual fundraiser for the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Uh, basically, you sign up. Uh, you'd say, I'm going to play video games and raise money for charity. You pick the hospital that's local to you, and then hopefully you join Team Kind of Funny and raise money under our moniker. Uh, we'll be hosting a whole bunch of Team Kind of Funny members as we kick off Extra Life weekend. And then tomorrow, Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, the Kind of Funny proper stream starts, twitch.tv slash Games. We're going for a full 12 hour z- packed with a bunch of exclusives, a uh, bunch of crazy stuff going on, a bunch of crossovers you probably didn't expect, like Greg Miller hosting the official Xbox Twitch. What? what? I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, great time. Extra Life's happening, so go over there. Remember, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash Extra Life. As usual, that has now merged over into just being a donation link when you click on it. However, if you wanted to still join, you could click out of it and click on the t- team extra, uh, Kind of Funny and go do all that and join up on that stuff and have a great time. Um, thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack and Tom Bach. Again, we are jam-packed with news that revolves around the PlayStation 5. Remember kindoffunny.com slash PS5 for all our hands-on coverage. Today we're brought to you by Quip and DoorDash, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin. What is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Nine items on the Roper Report. Oh! Baker's dozen. And I'll tell you what, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have broken them out individually because we're going to get to a whole bunch of delays and stuff. So strap in. This is going to be one of those shows. It's going to be 11 10. We're going to be like, all right, it's, eight, it's item eight. Uh, Roper Report. Let's start with number one. The PlayStation reviews are live. We have your roundup here. Remember, you can head over right now to kindoffunny.com slash PS5. Catch the special episode of PS I Love You XOXO as Blessing and I for two hours talk about our impressions of the PlayStation 5. But Let's check in with other people before we give you any more of our thoughts. Over at IGN, it got an 8 from Luke Riley. With a launch lineup dominated by games that are also available on PS4 and on the back of a generation already punctuated with in- incrementally more powerful hardware revisions like the PS4 Pro, the PS5 doesn't quite land as a knockout punch yet, but it's definitely got the power and speed to be a real contender. Parentheses, although the jury's still out on the stamina of that tiny 667 gigabyte SSD. However, while the PS5's well-considered UI and blistering quick loading times for PlayStation 5 games make it a pleasure to use, it's the DualSense controller that's proven to be the surprise haymaker I never saw coming. It truly leaves other controllers feeling primitive in comparison. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Yes. Agree or disagree? I 100% agree. Like The DualSense is the thing that, uh, coming out of playing the PlayStation 5 for the last couple of weeks, is the thing that is the most uh standout of my experience that i just didn't expect it to be like i expected the the haptic feedback to be cool or whatever i expected the adaptive triggers to be cool or whatever right i expected whatever or whatever like i I was those aren't those weren't really features that i was looking forward to as much and actually getting my hand on it and playing astros player playroom for the first time playing spider-man seeing how that stuff factors into those games and other games uh i'm actually really impressed with it and i'm really looking forward to uh seeing how other games use the dual sense and yeah like the the um Launch, li- launch lineup, I think, is something to point out. That's kind of I, I kind of disagree a little bit about how it doesn't feel like a knockout punch yet because I do think the launch lineup is great. I think it is it is worth you, pointing out that you declared on PS I Love You XOXO that it's the best PlayStation launch lineup of all oh, time. Yeah, and like it's worth pointing out that yeah, Miles Morales is on both consoles, right? Bucks. Sure. Uh, I guess we can't talk about Bucks next, but like. There, but there we know games, that it's on PlayStation Four as well. Yeah, it's on PlayStation Four. Like a good majority of the games that are coming out for the PS Five launch lineup are on both the PS4 and PS5. I don't think that takes away the fact that Miles Morales plays and runs better on PS5, right? Like, I... I, it's I designed, really, right? It's designed for the PlayStation 5. Yeah, and I actually want to, at, at, at some point, try out uh, Miles Morales for the PS4 to see, like, how how it plays and how different it is and how different it looks because playing it on the PS5 in performance mode, oh my god, I never want to go back. Like, I never yeah. want to... I, I never not... I, want, I never want to not play a Spider-Man game this way uh going forward and so like you know that taking into consideration astro's playroom taking into consideration stuff that we're looking forward to i, I was able to talk about um uh, the beginning hours of the pathless yesterday on ps love like right. very much looking forward to to how that game pans out like there's a lot to look forward to toward the launch of the ps5 let alone stuff like, like games like cyberpunk which are of what, course i guess i always i keep forgetting that that game got delayed to december but you know it's on its way here right like yeah, I, I I think it is as much of a knockout punch when you talk when you're talking about launch lineup as 
it needs to be and way more of a knockout punch than any other PlayStation platform before it in terms of well, I think it, what's interesting about Luke here, who's, I, you know, opinion, obviously I respect and I'm not like fighting with. It's not a knockout punch yet. He's talking about the console as it is, I feel right. And he's, yeah, he's bringing up this stuff, but he's talking about mm. there already being revisions and stuff. I still think that even going off of what the PlayStation 4 Pro is, what am I allergic to today? It must be PlayStation uh, oh going God. off of uh, like what the PlayStation 4 Pro is like. Just how night and day different this runs, how it's quiet, how fast it is, how fast loads are for PlayStation 5 games. Like, there's a lot going on here that we nerd out about in, uh, in incredible detail on PS I Love You that really, for me, does think, like, I think this is a no-brainer of a System 4. But we got more reviews to read through, so don't don't burn it all right now. Uh, GameSpot put up a review. They didn't rate it, though, so it's unrated. Uh, Matt Padgett over there says, At launch, the PlayStation 5 is an excellent console that paves the way for a promising future where gaming experiences can evolve in interesting ways and the process of experiencing them is streamlined. Its custom SSD, unique DualSense controller, and powerful specs draw a distinct line between last generation and the next. Faster loading times and system features like the PS5's activities make the SSD feel essential, while the DualSense's substantial feedback makes a strong case for moving on from the DualShock 4. Of course, the performance and visuals that the PS5 is capable of pushing offer excellent experiences no matter what graphics mode you prefer, and even though its backwards compatibility implementation isn't perfect, it's still exciting to know that I can play most of my PS4 library on this new console with uh, few, if any, issues. I even tested Guitar Hero Live, which works very well. Over at The Verge, it got an 8.5. Adam Webster wrote, Physically, the PS5 is a brash, intimidating piece of hardware, one that is clearly meant to signal a major shift. But underneath its changes, but underneath its changes are more subtle, at least right now. This isn't the move from SD to HD, or watching Mario explore a 3D space for the very first time. It's, <coughs> instead, it's a series of smaller... What is blowing in? What kind of pollen is doing this, Kevin? If is I die, you protect Do you yeah, not Omar, have a Zyrtec? Yeah, I got a Claritin. Hold on. Well, but I've I never had an allergy attack happen like so profound. Crunch you know it up I mean? real good and then put it under your tongue. It'll kick in faster. Well, I, why don't, I should just under move it like Nick tells me to, right? Under his tongue? Yeah, man. How does that work, Kevin? Like, what's the science behind that? It goes right into your blood. Right into your blood. If you're ever doing really? LSD, that's the way to go. Huh. All right, that's enough of that. All okay. right, Kevin. <laughs> you convinced me to do LSD at one meet and greet. I got to hear about it the rest of my life. It's, that's a joke don't do LSD instead it's a series of smaller uh, though still important shifts like faster speeds and more immersive and a more immersive controller which all add up to a markedly better experience compared to the PS4 by every conceivable metric parentheses aside from the space it takes up I can't tell you what the future holds but right now the PS5 is a great piece of hardware it might not be clear what makes the PS5 interesting just from watching trailers or live streams but once it's in your hands the next generation is a lot more obvious and I think Adam nails it, blessing. Where I do yeah. think it's what we talked about with even talking about the dual sense and the haptics and the triggers, right? Where hearing about all that stuff leading up to it, I was like, yeah, there's been rumble forever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, th what does the tension in a bow really mean? But then playing something like Astro, uh, playing Spider Man with that, feeling it and getting those immersive sensations out of it, I thought really took it to another level. Yeah. No, I, 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 I expect in future generations to come haptic to become the the norm right like because it is it is such a cool experience uh compared to rumble on previous controllers like it is it is something that i do not want to go go back from after having experienced it and yeah like i think adam nails it in so much of, of what he's saying like in terms of once you have it in your hands the next generation is much more obvious like leading up to this point i've I've been excited for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, but I've not really been sold on the idea that this is a th like th this is a big jump or this is a thing that needs to happen now. Like we we had the discussions on previous shows about should they delay the next generation because of mm -hmm. COVID and because of games being delayed and all this different stuff that seems to be out of their hands. And I've been of the mind that like yeah, just delay it because is there a reason for this thing to come out this fall that is going to really blow me away and sell me on why next generation needs to be a thing right now like it not having not having halo infinite not having uh, uh, uh quite a few games not having something that feels like it is like not, not having a reason for me to, to to show up really right like i didn't ha i didn't have i didn't have the reason to to feel like this is the thing i need right now ha have after having it in my hands for the last two weeks I am sold on next generation. I am sold on the PlayStation 5. I'm sold on on why uh I want to be playing this thing cuz like 
again, like I go back to the examples of Spider-Man Miles Morales and Astro's Playroom, and like Miles Morales playing that thing <laughs> in performance mode is an amazing is an amazing experience. Playing through Astro's Playroom is a convincing argument for why the new features of the PS5 are dope, right? And it does feel like this ushering in of, hey, this is what the new new this is what the next generation is, whether it is the SSD, whether it is the ray tracing, whether it is the dual sense, like all that stuff in conjunction with each other is really cool, really awesome. And I can't wait for like what the next I guess three, four years are <laughs> until we get like the next like iterative next revision PS5 yeah. Pro. Yeah. Kevin, what is next generation all about? Uh it's convenience, man. And I think that's, you know, at the core of this where you could we could have gone longer without PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. But using the PlayStation 5 as my primary console now for two straight weeks, it is the convenience of everything. It is how fast it loads. It is getting better Internet speeds out of it. It is, you know, going to my game library and seeing all my PS5 stuff and all my PlayStation 4 stuff and having it all there and having it download way quicker and just be able to get in and out of things so quickly. Right. I know it's the, the thing we seem to bang the drum the loudest about in terms of load times, but. From the game being off to being in New York and swinging around to Spider-Man, 18 seconds. 18 seconds from hitting, yes, play this game to actually being in the world and playing that game. And it looks beautiful and it's stunning. And when you fast travel, it's instant. You hit, say, it yeah. thing fills, you, you hold down X, it fills in, and then boom, you're walking out of a subway. Like, that's incredible. <coughs> that is what we want out of these experiences and what we want out of Next Gen right now. Yeah. No, I absolutely love that. Now, the reviews, and this is, I'm painting with a broad brush, of course, are positive it looks like everybody's high on the playstation 5 of course everybody has critiques and criticisms you know blessing you and i had a bunch on ps i love you at the top of it for me obviously the fact that there is no quick resume there is no x answer to xbox's quick resume however everybody comes at it with their own thing and has their own little uh, uh discovery moments let's get into some of those that have happened already since we've uh, put up our review and now other people are talking or sharing experiences Number two, you can't store PlayStation 5 games on an external hard drive. This is Shannon Grixty at Press Start. One of the more surprising things that I found when reviewing the PlayStation 5 is that it doesn't seem to support external hard drives for PS5 games. It was already confirmed that the internal SSD wouldn't be working at launch, parentheses, which I found... <coughs> which I found out after trying a Samsung uh, 980 Pro myself. This is, of course, the expandable storage they talked about. Uh, when plugging in an external hard drive to the PS5, it's made pretty clear that you can't store PS5 games on an external with phrases such as, quote, you can install PS4 games to extend storage and play them directly from there, end quote. At no point is it ever mentioned that you can store PS5 games on an external hard drive. When trying to move games to the external hard drive that I had plugged in, only PS4 games showed up which was consistent uh, with that initial message. One, one saving grace is that you can automatically set the PS5 to install PS4 games on an external hard drive, so that's pretty handy. Blessing, this one mm -hmm. caught me off guard. Yesterday during our re re recording of the PS I Love You uh, review, I said definitively, oh yeah, and, and you can't play PS5 games off the external hard drive, you can't play PS4 games off of it, but you can store your games there and move them back and forth. And... I don't know if that's something I dreamed, but I is felt that, like... Is that an Xbox Series X thing then? Because it yeah. is. It is. It seems like that's what's getting kicked around today, but I granted this has been such a weird... I mean, first off, I fucked up. I, I'm wrong about it. And, mm. But I, I took uh, comfort of the fact that other people's reviews fucked it up too. I, IGN, uh, their review says it, and then it, they had to cross it out and put a correction in there. I don't know. Yeah, if it was just an Xbox thing and we all assumed it was going to work or if somebody said that at some point and we all were like, oh, that makes sense and believed it because it's been such a weird rollout of a news cycle since we can't go play this thing. We can't go to an event. But I was sh super shocked by this today. I was also very shocked when I woke, woke up and read this. I was like, wait, are you for real? Then because that uh, this is one of the complaints that I brought. If you listen to our episode of PS Love you, XO, XO, like my, my one of my main complaints is the fact that there just isn't enough storage space in the PS5. And with them not supporting expanded SSD storage at launch, my the one saving grace for that thing is the fact that I, in my head, I was like, hey, well, I guess I can store my games on my uh, external hard drive and have that be a thing where I'm transferring games back and forth. That removed the equation makes this specific this specific thing ridiculous in terms of the storage space. Like, yeah, not having that it is ready not to okay go. to me. Yeah. I, I like that especially when we get into the conversation of how 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 big games are nowadays right and i know call of duty is the is the example we keep going to because call of duty is egregious but like yeah like you can hold 
four Call of Duties in your PlayStation 5, and that's about it in terms of games. And, like, not all games are Call of Duty, obviously, right? Like, get, if you're getting a triple a game is you you can probably expect it to be probably around like 50 gigs 70 gigs somewhere yeah, right. in that range 30 gigs if if you're lucky um but like yeah if you're storing big games on this thing right if you are the kind of person that is playing call of duty red dead redemption uh i forget how big final fantasy 7 remake was but i feel like that one was big too because it came in two discs right i'm not crazy Remake? Chat, let me know. Uh, remake, yeah, that came out on this last Xbox, year, right? And on PlayStation, it was one disc, wasn't it? Or was it two there, too? I doubt it didn't come out on Xbox, Xbox right? Right, it was a, I thought, yeah, yeah. okay, well, kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. No, no, deadly, deadly sin 12 says it did have two discs, yeah. Uh, and I, I so I assume the memory, the storage space for that game is pretty big. Like, I don't know, that's that's it's unfortunate to me that they don't have any option for storage expansion at launch. That feels like a huge miss. I hope they fix that sooner than later. That's something that I, in, in my mind, they have to fix within coming months. Like, That's gonna be I, I feel like it has to be a focus for them. Yeah. And I, I think, again, I'm wrong. And, I, and obviously, a whole bunch of us were wrong that you could do this, that you could store your PlayStation 5 games and take them back and forth. And, you know, the thing, I, I, t- I talked a little bit about it on Reddit or the YouTube comments today, or maybe both, of just like, Oh, it was Reddit because people were like, wait, I'm confused because IGN saying you can, but GameSpot saying you can't. And then Greg said this and somebody was in there like, I bet it was just that IGN assumed you could because that's what we've heard before. And that's where I was like, that's exactly what happened to me is that, you know, everybody tests things differently. You don't come to kind of funny for us to be like, here's where we took it and what the frame rate is. And here's the hard like you're here and here if we like the games and what we think of the trophies. Right. Mm. Um so you have those other people coming out and doing those kind of tests. And it's very much is, you know, you move from, I think, being a big outlet like I we were at IGN when we worked there to being our smaller thing where we can do our own thing and have a laser focus on who we are and what defines us. You see your own personal use case rise to the top so much. And so my personal use case is what I've talked about on other shows, right? I have bomb ass internet. My data cap doesn't exist. So whatever. You know what I mean? I'm gonna I, I download stuff all the time, thinking I'll play it and then delete it, and then months later download it again and then maybe play it or don't. And like I move around that way and it doesn't matter for me. But I totally understand somebody else not being in that situation. You have shitty internet, you do download this stuff, and you just want, you know, it takes a weekend to download a game or overnight to download a game. You clearly want to be able to not have to delete that to be able to move it to yeah. the external hard drive move it back maybe you would be ready to go pay for you know the expandable memory but it's crazy that you can't do this you can't just transfer it over to the the hard drive and then transfer it back when you want to play it and then that yeah sony doesn't have an answer for this that's the that's what's mind-boggling about it is that yeah. i feel like clearly they've heard people wrong about this they've heard us be wrong about this before we've talked about this oh you can store it on a, a external hard drive you just can't play it off of it i'm surprised that it hasn't been corrected but then you partner that up with the fact that it was you know yesterday right or two days ago when they were like hey yeah the expandable memory is not going to be available at launch either like that's fucked up and then you look at the series x where it's like yeah they got the seagate thing ready to go plug and play bam you know 220 bucks ready to go or use your external that way i've been uh not too high on the on how series x has gone about it either because it is propri- proprietary but like at the very least like they have something like at yeah, the very least you have an option at launch even 100%. if the option from playstation was a proprietary thing of hey we are selling our own but down the line we're going to a- approve third party uh expansion for your console like that would have been fine with me too at least it's something the fact that they don't have anything uh for what you're saying in terms of like use cases in the us that is i'm pretty sure that's the use case for most people in terms of either having data caps or you know like me and you we are we play video games all the time and like our priority is our gaming experience and so i have at this right now i have my ps5 hooked up uh to uh an ethernet cord right so i'm i'm plugged i'm plugged in directly um uh i have right now i have no data cap because we me and michael uh, uh opted for that because we knew we were going to be working from home and all this stuff we didn't want to have to deal with with all that stuff right yeah. most people have data caps i assume most people that are playing playstation or playing or most people that have consoles in general are probably hooked up through wi-fi like it is the the use case for most people with this i assume is going to be a struggle in terms of storage management and like we're already used to deleting stuff and reinstalling stuff. Like that's not a foreign thing to us for the last couple of generations. And so sure. like, I don't think there's going to be a huge backlash or anything about it, but the fact that we're here and the fact that 
it feels like options are being jumping into this new gener- new generation options are being taken away from us like this is kind of why i talked about it a little bit yesterday when it came to the folders thing which is way less of an egregious example right the fact that you don't have folders on the no ps5 folders, yeah. it's like okay cool like I, I i'm like that's ridiculous but it's not the end of the world like i can live i can live very easily without folders the fact that expansion that this expansion thing is taking place i'm like i don't i it, it, it feels it's like a to thing. miss yeah it's another thing mm. that i think we, you and me can live without but then it is extrapolated it out to the yes. other users and it is that thing of like how fast your hard drive is going to fill up when it is cool yeah you're getting miles and you're getting Sackboy, and you know you're gonna play demon souls i i've seen people in the chat be like is this really an issue it's like okay sure you're thinking of the three launch games you're gonna use in your playstation 5 but then what about fortnite and what about warzone and what about all these other experiences you're gonna load up and again maybe that's not you at all and you don't have to worry about that other gamers do and again you could be putting those backwards compatible things to an external drive but it's just that other i guess level of confusion right now as everybody figures this out and this is a weird thing not to have and just have it in between yeah in terms and of with, you know go ahead. with well without having an expansion uh or with, without having my external drive plugged into my ps5 i've already filled up my ps5 like, i've yeah. already had to do the thing of like managing storage and figuring out all right what game am i how likely am I going to play Genshin Impact on my PS5 and like making that decision? I can't imagine people who either don't have external storage or people who are going to have to essentially figure like it's not going to be that long until we have enough PS5 games that like fill that fill up your your drive. Like even, say, even, I mean, even individually as players, like in terms of buying yeah. games, like it's probably going to take six months for me to have enough games that I'll probably have in rotation that fill up my storage drive. Like it's not it doesn't take that long. Yeah, and I think that's the, you know, again, when there is Fortnite PlayStation 5 edition, there you go. Like, my, you can't even argue that, well, you can put the PlayStation 4 version of Fortnite on the external drive and play that way. Like, there's all these concessions you need to make and figure out. And it's just a weird thing, I think, that <coughs> at launch, it isn't there, and they didn't have this messaging ready to go ahead of time. Yeah, and I'm looking, I, I ended up looking it up. Final Fantasy VII Remake is 100, 100 gigabytes. So, again, like, about six of those you can fit in your PS5. Uh, give me a, <coughs> what is going on? You gotta close that window. They're closed now. Oh, they're oh god! <laughs> but so, I don't know what the hell oh, no. blew through the house that I am now just dying. Whatever came in through the window, because literally I've been at this desk since four forty-five in the morning doing stuff. Windows open, not a problem. Literally sat down and a breeze came through, and I'm just dying all of a sudden. Oh god! Oh goodness! All right, so number three on the Roper report. Uh, more bad news. You and weird stuff that I overlooked. You can't put PS5 saves on a USB. This is Austin Goslin over at Polygon. At the moment, the PlayStation 5 doesn't support copying save data onto external devices. Uh, instead, the console's only option for moving save files from one PS5 to another or backing up save data is to use Sony's cloud storage, which is available exclusively to PlayStation Plus subscribers. This is different than how it works on the PlayStation 4, which allows users to back up their save data to a USB drive as well as cloud storage. Without that option, PS5 owners are at risk of losing their save files if some catastrophe befalls them, like their console getting stolen in a robbery or destroyed in a flood or bricked by a firmware update, unless they pay for an active PlayStation Plus subscription. The PS4 PS5 difference becomes clear in the PS5's system settings. Uh, in the Save Data and Game Slash App Settings page of the menu, there's a section labeled Save Data PS4. There, players can choose to copy PS4 save files to a USB drive or Sony's cloud storage, or delete those files from the console. The other option is to change the is to change the way that the PS5 handles the automatic upload of PS4 save data to the cloud storage. However, the save data PS5 menu lacks the USB drive option. Instead, the only things to do with PS5 save files are to manually copy them from one from the console's internal storage to Sony's cloud storage, or to delete them. Another weird minutia that I'm like, wait, why? Why would you do yeah. this? I don't, under- I don't understand why you would make this move. Like, I, I, that's the kind of that's the thing I've been trying to break down in my mind is like, what is the reason for this? Because now it just feels like feels like you're taking away functionality for the totally. sake of taking away functionality. And for this one specifically, it's unfortunate because now you're telling me that hey, if you want to back up your saves or you, if you want to be in the place where you're safe with your saves, you have to subscribe to PS Plus. That feels like they're nickeling or nickel and diming me in a way that. I don't like in 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 a in a way that feels unnecessary. Um, it's not like the worst. It, it's not the worst news. Like it's not the end of the world uh, in terms of what this is. But it it is. It feels randomly 
unfortunate if that makes sense like i don't understand why it's here and like the fact that it's here is ma- is making me go like why like why is why is this the case yeah it's a weird choice on that front that i didn't see obviously i use cloud storage as well but i have used the usb drive function a ton of times and so to not have it there you're like wait why would you do that what would go on here i don't understand you know what i mean yeah why i'm i'm right there with you and again like i i don't think about it too much because i have ps plus and i use cloud storage and yeah. like i let that take care of it for me and everybody should should use that if you have the option to because it 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 is great right you get the peace of mind you don't have to think about uh plugging in a usb and all that stuff but it do, it does feel like you're leaving people without an option with that uh i see people in the chat going you're wrong and then nanobiologist writes in sony announced before that you can put ps4 save games on a usb drive and transfer them to the ps5 that is not what we're talking about again remember we're talking about you can't take a playstation 5 save for like miles morales which is a bad example because Astro's Playroom, and put that onto a USB. You can only back up that save via the PlayStation Cloud. So let me know what yeah. you're talking about then where where there's a you're wrong. Because obviously, oh, no, Nano just goes, got it. No, okay, cool. Yeah, we're all on the same page now. Oh, yeah, weird functionality to take away. Something I imagine they'll patch back in, but I don't know why. And people are saying, oh, security and all this other stuff. Sure, but do we care that much about you hacking the save file or whatever? Like, no, like let it's already working on PlayStation four and it's um, how some people I'm sure back up all their stuff. Why not let it be that way? I digress. Yeah. Uh, you know, another one here. Uh, yeah. I want to give a shout out, of course, to something I forgot to mention in our PlayStation five review as an annoyance. One of the, the few that I, I had, <clears throat> but Jeff Gersman tweeted today, special glaring stare of disbelief to whoever decided to remove the upload, download cloud saves menu option from the game's tiles. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, I, that, I, I texted you about that like day one, where I I had the fear. Where I was like, wait, so do cloud saves on PS4 not work on PS5? And it is no, you have to go basically go into settings and then go into to saves or storage, whatever it is, yeah. and then like upload all your saves, uh, the way you would. But like, yeah, it, it th- this this is again what what, I, what I've been talking about, like what I mentioned in the P, in the in PS Love UX OXO, where it's like, why are you removing random functionality? <laughs> why are you like? taking things away that like worked fine uh for the sake of i don't know like for uh, it, it it doesn't i don't see the rhyme or reason why they're making the specific decisions they're making in terms of some some of the ui stuff like overall i guess it's more speedy yeah. and maybe 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 they're doing it just to make things more snappy and more clean and more simple but it feels like they're also at the same time sacrificing yeah but that stuff. option that button on the tiles there's I'm, you can already get information they should just put it there upload, yeah save, you know upload download definitely save make it easy now, if you want yet another wrinkle to the PlayStation 5 as we all keep peeling back the layers of this onion, number four, let's talk about PT's strange PlayStation 5 journey. We're going to be reading from Polygon where Michael McWhorter had this to say. Now, before I even get into that, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash PS5 and see me valiantly try to get the PT demo from my PlayStation 4 to my PlayStation 5. Uh, I fail. And then this morning... It got weirder. So here we go. Uh, Kojima Productions' playable teaser for its canceled Silent Hill reboot horror game, PT, is a precious commodity to many PlayStation 4 owners. After Hideo Kojima's departure from Konami and Silent Hill's cancelization, uh, PT was removed from Sony's PlayStation Store. If you didn't already have it, you were pretty much out of luck. The bad news for prospective PlayStation 5 owners is that your existing download of PT cannot be transferred over to Sony's new console, nor is the game playable through backward compatibility. Here's the strange thing, though. At one point over the past two weeks, it was both transferable and playable on PS5. I play, and this is, of course, of Michael at Polygon. I played PT on my PS5 in late October, the day after I received my review unit. But it appears that when the PlayStation 5 launches on November 12th, it won't play PT through backward compatibility. PT was the first PS4 title I tested through back- backward compatibility on PS5. On October 24th, I transferred my copy of PT to and played the game on my PS5, picking up from a recent save that carried over from PS4. Then I restarted PT from the beginning and played through it a bit more. It seemed to work fine. But in the days leading up to Sony's PS5 review embargo, the situation changed. PT is now listable, listed as playable on PS4 title, meaning it can't be played on PS5. And after being forced to do a factory reset on my PS5 review unit this week, which deleted all game contents from the system, I learned I was no longer able to transfer PT to my PS4 or from my PS4 to my PS5. 
my colleague Russ uh, still has his transferred copy of PT sitting on his PS5 SSD. When it was playable, PT appeared to perform on PS5 just as it did on PS4. I did not complete the full playthrough of the demo, but I experienced no noticeable issues during the 10 minutes which I tested the game. Sony had previously warned that some content, including game demo, demos, which would encompass PT, might not be compatible on the new console. The playable teaser for Silent Hills does not appear on the list of unsupported titles on Sony's PS5 backwards compatibility support page. Reached for comment, a Sony spokesperson told Polygon that the change to PT's backward compatibility on PS5 was, quote, a publisher decision, end quote. Fuck you, Konami. God yeah. damn it. This God. doesn't surprise me. It feels like at every at every step Konami has tried to make us forget about PT and make it make it so that that game just does just doesn't stop seeing the light of day. You know, and I and like part of me gets it because you went through a bad breakup and like you don't you know, you, you want people to forget that this masterpiece of a thing exists, yeah. all that stuff. I kind of get it from that from that aspect, but like from a from a from one a a person that likes video games point of view or um uh, uh standpoint and then also like a game preservation st- standpoint it's like just let people play pt like people really like it you know like you can you can use p like you own pt use it for clout like use it <laughs> like use it to kind of gain back some uh uh i guess fan support goodwill, right like yeah. yeah goodwill like let people play it let people redownload it load it it's- let people do all that stuff maybe there, maybe there's some conflict there in terms of um uh what's his name walking dead death stranding norman character. Reedus. <laughs> well yeah maybe there's like some weirdness with like you have norman reedus's character in there towards the end of it with the with the actual teaser part of the playable Fuck teaser off. and stuff i mean like who it, knows? all this is is like just them wanting us to forget about it and sh- they keep trying to make it not a thing which makes it more of a thing if this would have if they would have done nothing if they never if, all right you already took it off the psn for playstation 4 fine i know there's workarounds but for argument's sake they took it down right just leave it so, yeah, if you have it, you can transfer it over and you have it. And then it would have been like, oh, PC source on the PlayStation 5. And everybody would have gone like, oh, cool. And that would have been the end of it. Now we're here yeah. again going, like, how fucking petty can you be, Konami? Just let the fucking, like, not, and again, to be clear, it worked. It worked early. If I would have, do- I did my test yesterday and recorded my video yesterday, right? Or maybe uh, today's Friday, so maybe Wednesday. If I would have done it in the first week, I would have had it on the system and then it would have been deactivated. Or I'm like, come on. Like, there's yeah. a bunch of, there are videos up. I forget. Uh, it's, if you go to my video version on youtube.com slash kind of funny games in the comments, I respond with another, the other video that I saw first this morning. That is somebody being like, hey, here's footage of me playing it. And here's me not able to play it anymore. It's just gone off my system. Like, come on. I wonder if if both systems were offline, like if you got to PS5 and you set it up offline and like you turned your PS4 offline and try to transfer it that way. Yeah. I wonder if it would still work. I wonder if it's like immediately once you once you connect to the internet, which everybody's going to do with their PS5. Uh, once you connect to the internet, then it, it deactivates. Because I can see a case where like you get a PS, you buy two PS5s, one just to be your PT PS5, let that thing sit for seven years, sell that thing for millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. PT That's PS5. how you retire. Then you, you retire. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's the way you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have still more PlayStation 5 review roundups and news to get through. But before we do that, let me tell you about our sponsors. Remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames to get each and every episode ad-free. And speaking of ads, let's talk about Quip. There are only two types of people in this world. Those of us who brush with flo- brush and floss every day and those who might just start. Thanks to Quip's new refillable floss pack. You know Quip, the electric toothbrush you hear about all the time on this show because I use it all the time and I use the Bluetooth one that gives me the rewards. Uh, But it's their sleek, reusable floss pick that you'll want to use next. The durable handle is easy to guide, restrings with a click, and comes with a compact mirror dispenser case for on the go. Plus, a single refill pod replaces over 180 single-use plastic flossers, so it's better for your teeth and the environment. Pair your floss with the perfect electric toothbrush for adults and kids. Quip has made simple guiding features you need, like the time sonic vibrations and guiding pulses, to help you brush better. And now, you can get amazing rewards just for brushing better every day. Quip also delivers brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the store. 
Uh, bring delight to your everyday brushing and join over 5 million mouths brushing with Quip, starting at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash games right now, you'll get your first refill for free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash games. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash games. Up next is DoorDash. Between never-ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to keep communities we operate in safe. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off and zero delivery fees in the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code GAMES. That's $5 off your and zero delivery fees on your first order. And why do they have the other your in there? You know what I, I mean? Know. Every time I copy over the ad, it has that typo in there. And I, I have to remember to get it. Get I it usually, out. I usually uh, flub it, or I don't flub it. I usually try to autocorrect. And then today I was like, let's commit and see if it actually makes sense. It didn't make sense. Uh, that's five dollars off and zero delivery fees fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and use the code Games. Don't forget code Games for five dollars off your first order with DoorDash. Almost used it today to get bacon bacon for breakfast, but oh. was up too early, which was a heartbreaker. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Number five on the Roper Report. Spider-Man Miles Morales reviews are up. We have your roundup. It has an 84 on Metacritic as of 6.15 in the morning. That's how early I was working on Kind of Funny Games Daily today. I doubt it's changed too much. Uh, IGN. Dot com gave it a 9.0. Jonathan Dornbush Beyond says, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales may not be quite as packed with content as the original, but it still stands out as an essential story in Insomniac's Spidey universe. It earns its spot as a fantastic follow-up, telling a wonderful Miles-specific story while improving upon the fundamentals of the first game with distinctive moves and enemies. And it's an excellent way to break in your new PlayStation 5. It looks spectacular, loads fast, and makes fun use of the DualSense controller, the directional audio, and more. But regardless of which generation you played on, it's a worthy follow-up to one of the best superhero games ever made. Then, Game Informer gave it a 9. Uh, Andrew Reiner over there wrote, uh, The new Spider-Man's adventure is shorter and more fo focused, but it's still an exhilarating blast. On the lower end of the spectrum, GameSpot gave it a 7. Uh, Jordan Rami said, or uh, Rami? Rami? Jordan. Uh, Rame, I think. Rame. Jordan Rame uh, wrote, Like I said at the top of this review, Spider-Man Miles Morales feels a lot like a missing chapter to 2018 Spider-Man. The gameplay is so similar and the environment is largely the same. It's the characters, especially Genki and the Tinkerer, uh, and the story that it tells that Spider-Man Miles Morales manages to break free of what's been done already to deliver something you'll want to see all the way through. It's a bit of a bummer to see Spider or Mar 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 Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, trip up at certain points, but thankfully that doesn't happen often. The game wastes a little time jumping you into Miles' story and rarely lets up on the brakes, packing uh, the young wall crawler's first solo outing with more superpowers and radio chatter than the game needs. And yet, despite its frantic pace, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a compelling open-world action game that helps highlight why Miles is so special, his culture. It's Miles' unique, dif unique differences and earnest attempts at figuring out how to protect his community that make him into such a wonderful hero. Not the mask he wears and the superpowers he wields. Blessing, as we've said multiple times, of course, kindoffunny.com slash PS5 to get all of our hands-on and reviews. We have a Miles Morales uh, review up right there. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you in agreement with the reviews you've seen today? Yeah, no. I, I uh, for all the reviews I, I've seen and checked out, I kind of I kind of hear where they're all coming from. I kind I probably sit somewhere between uh, Jordan, you know, at Games Gamespot who gave it a seven, and yeah. al also the outlets that gave it a nine. Like it is, it is an excellent game. And the way I, I kind of summed it up uh, in my tweet is saying like it for me, it lives in the shadow of both Spider Man twenty eighteen and Spider Man Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like on its own merits, it is it is a great game. Like it is what you want. It is more Spider Man. It is as fun as Spider Man twenty eighteen. Uh, you know, there's there's some story moments that kind of I, I felt like they didn't land as well. Uh, like 
there's certain there are certain parts of Miles Morales that weren't as impactful for me as 2018. But overall, like I still I still love those characters. I still liked a, a lot of what they did. Uh, Jordan in his review pointed out uh, Miles like Miles's culture and 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 uh, basically the, the the man beneath the mask. And I thought they did a, a fantastic job highlighting Miles as a character just beyond his Spider-Man persona. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I, I, I hear where pretty, where pretty much all these reviews are coming from and I kind of, I kind of sit in the middle of all of them. Yeah. To, you know, give a synopsis of mine, of course, please go watch or listen. It's the new game. One of the new games cast. Cause there's obviously Astro as well. I love this game. Uh, I think it's better pound for pound than Spider-Man PS4, uh, but it's cheating because it's learning from everything Spider-Man PS4 didn't even do wrong because Spider-Man PS4 was so good, but it improves and evolves and does all that thing. And I think Miles is uh, fantastic. I think uh, it's uh, Najee Jeter, right? I think he does such a, an amazing uh, job being him and giving him range and all these amazing things that I can't recommend it enough. Um I do want to toss in here what I like to call a segment required reading. Of course, you know, we tell you when there's something cool out there to go do. Uh, Gita Jackson over at vice.com did a review of Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I think it's fascinating. Uh, Gita, of course, a person of color and living in New York, talking about the disconnect of Miles' story and some of the themes it's playing with, but not committing to it, right? There's a Black Lives Matter uh, painting in uh, Harlem in this game. Like, they're Insomniac's clearly including that message, but not going all the way home with it in terms of what it's like to have, uh, you know, the influence of the NYPD and cops in New York and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I can't recommend that enough over at Vice.com. Uh, the tweet synopsis, right, that uh, Gita put up, it goes like this. Miles Morales is a good video game, but while it recreates the material the material reality of New York with a sl- with slavish devotion, uh, it doesn't come close to representing the emotional reality of living here in this moment. Uh, and then she is, there's a thread here that I think goes on really well, but again, the piece overall, I would direct you to vice.com to go read that the, their Spider-Man Miles Morales PlayStation 5 review from Gita. Uh, I you know, I think it's one of those things that you know you talk about some of the story decisions not working for you bless or whatever and i agree of like yeah i think you put it so well in our review like conversations would end these <laughs> if you ever yeah. need to take a breath and do it but like everybody, everybody they, took a breath and, and took, it took a step back i feel like the game could have gone a different direction <laughs> but a lot of times in our real world i feel like that's the actual thing and i think again gita sums that up really well of like the plot walks down an extremely well-trod plot path and offers little in the way of surprises it's truly wholesome feel-good superhero writing which i 100 back mm-hmm. and i think that's one of the reasons i think i like it so much probably and i can but i understand that it could be more it's the classic tim gettys on a review of like sure but it could be that much more than that but yeah i also it, thought spider-man ps4 was you know well trotted territory yeah and i also and i also say in in a similar place as Gita and that idea of like the Tim Gettys, like it could be more kind of thing where I, I remember playing Spider-Man 2018 and coming out of it and having conversations with friends, right? Who were like, yeah, like it's cool, but also, man, Spider-Man works with the police a lot and the yeah. NYP and like in the real, in the real world, right? Like we're kind of dealing with uh, a, a lot of ideas of how to reform, rep- uh, reform police and how can police do better and how can we, how, how, how can we change things because we're in a place right now where a lot of people are color people of color are not being treated the right way by police and so going into miles morales i was kind of wondering like all right are they going to address that are we going to have another uh uh i forget what he calls himself in spider, in cop. spider cop yeah are we going to have like more spider cop or like how how are they going to address that and i feel like they d- kind of didn't address it yeah. um and like part of that is it is this light-hearted you know fun colorful superhero story that kind of doesn't take itself seriously which kind of brings me back to that place of yeah but what if like what if they yep. did more what if they went all the way and kind of and, and tried to address that stuff in a way that was meaningful for who miles's character is and who and uh, what's going down in harlem and this is why i'm tossing uh gita's writing out there and her review out there because she goes into such extreme depth with that and does such a great job i think as somebody for me personally right who's never lived in new york and of course is a 37 year old white doofus or whatever like for her to go back and forth between this is it's it's so much more than a review i think it's a great op-ed right and it's a great uh perspective piece of going back from hey here's what spider-man and miles's story is representing and doing and that's great but then to tiptoe 
up to the line of Black Lives Matter, they never get on the other side of it of like, well, the cops are a big part of that. And some of the cops you pass, them not trusting Spider-Man, right? And not trust, like they never explore that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even the Harlem's eventual embracing of like, oh, this is our Spider-Man. They're referring to it being a black Spider-Man, that it being a Spider-Man from their neighborhood, that it be representing something in a downtrodden of people and the references to the, that Harlem's getting gentrified when G- Gita's like, it's been gentr- that's over. That's that ended when Bill Clinton got an office. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's a really fascinating read of what Marvel comics is so good at of, Hey, our heroes exist in the real world, but then this still very much being a, like you said, blessing, colorful, bright, positive New York, ha- positive Harlem. And not that that yeah. doesn't exist in real New York and Harlem, but at a time where it is so juxtaposed. Juxt- juxtaposed. Yeah, and I'm seeing I'm seeing some folks in chat say that like it's kind of hard for them to cover that since the game the game was well in development before the events of this year really brought that stuff to light. And to be very clear, that stuff has always been around. Like that's not like a new thing, right? That like. I'm cops. pretty sure it's a 2020 <laughs> thing, racism and the NYPD yeah. being a problem. Like this was that was a critique when Spider-Man 2018 came out. Like there are articles coming out around that time about how like and I saw another somebody else in chat being uh, saying that like I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing for Spider-Man to be to be working with the police, and that's not even necessarily what I'm saying either, right? There is a there is a realistic way I think that they could address this stuff where it 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 is shined in more of a realistic light than a. Let's pretend that none of this is going on, right? Let's let's pretend like there like there isn't this weird relationship between black folks and police. Let's pretend that like let's have Miles's mom be a politician, but none of this stuff get addressed. Like there there are weird things like that that I feel feel like could be done better for this game. That like this game's like it, this game's rated what T for teen? Like they they say cuss words in this game. Like they, if they could do that, then, then I think they can have some realistic portrayal in terms of. Hey, this is what my, this is what a black Spider Man who is kind of working in conjunction with police in terms of stopping crimes and doing all this stuff. This is this is how he would view police, or this is how he would he would exist alongside them. Um, and there's just none of that. Yeah, if I can jump in, and again, mm-hmm. I, I obviously don't have uh, the firsthand knowledge of so much of this, right? But I think it's not so much that what I what I love about Gita's piece is that she's not damning the game for this. She's not saying this game sucks because she's like, it's a great game for all intents and purposes, but it's an interesting thought piece of like, they get to this point. They keep getting to the edge of the diving board and talking about real societal problems, but then never identifying what the enemy is. And that's of course to the people's point of like, does it, should it really address that? That's of course within insomniacs right to have their, their, have their New York be a positive shining. Everybody's happy unless you're a criminal and your Spider-Man's out to stop you. You can do that. But then there's also then a great chance for, I think criticism and discussion of like, cool. You made some great moves here. It's awesome to see this black lives matter thing. And not only no, it's not spoilers. Like you, if you do all the side missions, you end there. Like there's one, there's a mission that ends you there. Like this isn't like an Easter egg. This is very much like, boom, you are in front of it. Black Lives Matter, you're Spider-Man. And that's a great message to see portrayed. But again, then there are, you are going to have criticism, rightfully so, of like, cool, but let's really examine the other ways that could have been done. That's a great message. That's a great screenshot. That's a great thing to get in front of people. And again, as I talk about it in our review, like I love that Harlem is a character. And I love that there's so many NPC characters that are introduced here that their um, either disability, if we're talking about Haley, or their race or uh, their sexual preference, these are all introduced as elements of them, but it's never defining them. It's never, oh, I'm going to go talk to that deaf street artist. Oh, I'm going to go talk to that lesbian. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, mm. that's not, it's never used that way. It's used in a way to show, like, no, no, this is a diverse place and there are all these different people to it. And that, again, is great. And Insomniac, I think, should be applauded for that. But it is this question of what is also, especially, and I remember this from 2018. What do you do when, yeah, there are somebody like Gita, somebody who knows New York, somebody who understands the history of the NYPD in a way I, I do not? What do you do when you see Spider-Man being working so closely with the police and again, it never being addressed? It's okay that it isn't, but also it could be so much more. Like, and what is that line? And is it always going to be, which again is totally Marvel's right or Insomniac's right or whatever, is it always going to be this, hey, hunky-dory New York, or do they want to try that and play with that one day? Yeah. Number six on the Roper Report. 
Astros Playroom review roundup. Of course, our review is up. Kind of funny.com slash PS5. Uh, right now, Astros Playroom has a Metacritic of 82. Uh, this is at 620 in the morning. Uh, Push Square gave it a nine. Uh, Sammy Barker wrote, Astros Playroom is deserving of every single su superlative uh, you're likely to hear associated with it. As a platformer, it's a varied and entertaining experience that's constantly introducing new and exciting ideas over the course of its campaign. And as a dual sense tech demo, it's similarly effective at showcasing the power and potential of Sony's new hardware. But perhaps above all, this is a love letter to the legacy of PlayStation. And it feels fitting that as we enter this exciting new chapter uh, from an undeniably iconic gaming brand, we take a moment to remember the milestones that got us to this point. Over on IGN, uh, Jonathan Dornbush again gave it an eight. It says, Astro's Playroom surprised and delighted me. This PS5 pack-in most certainly hues closer to a technical showcase, essentially loosely structured essentially a loosely structured sandbox to mess around in and discover what the PS5 has to offer. But it has enough collectibles, creative ideas, and genuinely exciting uses of the dual sense that PS5 owners shouldn't brush this off, uh, shouldn't brush this one aside in the launch lineup. After months and months of hearing how the dual sense would immerse like me, immerse me like never before, Astro's Playroom uh, put promises into practice and immense, impressively proved what's possible with the PS5's new controller. And then Destructoid gave it a seven. Uh, Chris Carter wrote, Astrobot has replaced Knack as the cute Sony mascot, and I'm okay with it. Although Astro's Playroom isn't a killer app, booting up your PS5 and playing it for free is a great way to get accustomed to your new shiny toy from multiple angles. Blessing? Greg. Go off. What was was Knack ever like the cute like mascot that we wanted I mean, out, at out PlayStation of 4 launch? It was there, right? Yeah, I, I like, agree. I agree. He was there by default. We didn't choose him. I feel like Astrobot, we're kind of choosing him, right? Like, mm -hmm. we like Astrobot, and Sony's obviously we choosing him. We love too. Astrobot, but yeah, I want more Astrobot. Um, I was very curious to see like what the review scores for this were going to be because, like, coming out even at, at the beginning of our own review. Uh, I think I was struggling a little bit of like trying to express like where I kind of sat with it because I absolutely I absolutely adore Astro's Playroom, but I just yeah. it, it comes back to the Spider-Man thing of like man this could be so much more and that's and it's purely from a it's a two hour long thing like it's a two hour long game slash tech if demo you platinum it four hours according to my PlayStation Five and honestly I might do that like I I, I want more reasons to play Astro Play, Astro's Playroom so I might actually go back and maybe platinum it I'll think about it. Um, sure but like I am sitting in the silver of like the PlayStation trophy ranks, and I believe that like we're in the we're in we're in the same rank, right? Like you know, I feel like silver. I mean, I'm a, a different tier of silver. I'm a different tier of silver. Yeah, but you barely who, squeaked nobody, into silver. Who cares about the tiers though? You know, I, we're both, I, mean, I do we're both I have a different tier image. You know, what I, mean? I feel I like I, see, I feel like silver is a great place to be, and so who knows if I really need to get the platinum or not. Uh, that said, I kind of uh, isn't. It, this is another one where I'm like, I kind of feel where all the reviews are coming from, right? Like. I don't know how I, if I was if I was scoring a review, I have no idea how I would score this game because like it's right they're they're right that it's a tech demo and like it is kind of like it, it's gone in a breeze. At the same time, what's there is fantastic. Like I cannot wait for people to get their hands on it and play it and experience it because I love my two hours with this thing. It's another one where I'm. I'm way high on it. Like, I'm way more in line, I think, with Sammy at Push Square with the nine. And not to discredit anybody else's because everybody's saying it's great. Like, I don't, it's free, number one. So, I mean, if you can't make the argument about your, your 60 or $70 being spent into it, right? Like, I think it is then the argument of this thing is, we talked about it in the same way in our reviews, right? Where both Spider Man and Astro left me wanting more, but Spider Man left me satiated. Astro, I was still hungry for more, and I'm sad that it's over. And even platinuming it and having gotten every one of the artifacts and seen every level and done all the secrets and stuff like that, I want more platforming, which is great. And I would like say my thing is like now I'm into this weird thing of like, man, when's that Sackboy code coming through? When am I gonna get to play this Sackboy PlayStation 5 game? Like, I hope that this is uh pointing to a bright future for Astrobot that uh Astrobot gets another platforming game out there. I think, yeah, this is you know, we talk about it in the review, obviously, but you and I started at these different ends of the spectrum where you thought, I think this was going to be a little bit more of a game. I thought it was going to be more of a tech demo. And so as we got brought back to that middle, uh, my my it, it, it exceeded my expectations where I think it might have fallen below yours. Mm -hmm. And that's well and good. But yeah, pound for pound, what you're doing in it is great. I think as we're all so high right now on PlayStation nostalgia and the excitement of a new generation, this game is the the perfect, especially going through and platinuming it, is the perfect 
hey, remember where we've been as a brand and look at where we're going in the future thing. And I think it's awesome. Yeah. I hope to see more. I expect to see more. I have to imagine we're going to see more, right? Like as we get going through this. Yeah. Um, I think I put in to title this one, your PlayStation five questions answered. And then we're still, we're an hour into the show and I still have multiple stories for you to go. So I think we've answered some of them as we talked about them, but let me just run through some really, really quick ones. Uh, right now, uh, some guy over on Twitter was like, Hey, Greg and blessing. I was wondering if the PS five, uh, can have video cast to them from a phone. Not, it's not something I've seen brought up anywhere. I was wondering if this feature exists, uh, for our embargoes, we weren't allowed to use any of the media stuff because they're still yeah, coming in, putting stuff together and apps up there. I have not heard of any way to video cast to your from your phone uh, to your uh, PlayStation 5. That's what you're asking, right? I was wondering if the PlayStation 5 has video cast to them from a phone. So me taking my phone to it, no. Remote Play, of course, is still in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I have not tested it out, though, with PlayStation 5. But Remote Play is back with PlayStation 5. So you assume the same stuff would work for it there. Um Mike wanted to know, is there any way to turn off the activity cards uh, feature slash functionality? No blessing, right? We screwed around the best we could with that, but I never saw a way to turn off the activity cards on that. And we were talking in our review of wanting to customize those a bit more. Yeah, it seems like those are just, those are straight up built into the experience. And like, I don't think there's a reason why you'd want to turn it off, really. Like, it's not really distracting anything. It's not like blocking anything or ca causing any sort of. I wish I could just uh, customize it more, is all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wish I could move things around or like make it so that certain cards would appear towards the front, even though I think like if you use certain cards more, they'll probably like naturally uh, front load, I imagine. Um, but yeah, I wish I could customize that stuff more. But like, again, it doesn't get in the, in the way. Like, when you press your, your PlayStation button, it is, it is immediately yeah. like, all right, this is what you're doing uh do you need game help like do you want uh what do you want to know what your trophies are oh by the way your friends are playing these games do you want to hop into your to their party randomly it's stuff like that uh and like i think i the thing i'm looking forward to with cards is i think that stuff is probably going to change and evolve and get better in the future because some of the stuff right now i'm like okay i don't know when i'm gonna randomly jump into my friends parties but i imagine the the less and less people use that feature the more playstation gets that feedback and they're like all right how can we, what do we need to replace this with uh with in order to make this more of a useful experience uh arma getty b in the twitch chat says any playstation vr testing done no i'm still waiting on my free uh adapter <laughs> so my playstation vr still cannot work with my uh uh, uh playstation 5 so yeah no. and i forgot I saw to get my adapter <laughs> and so there's a link that somebody can put it help, in help chat you out with. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh go ahead and put it there for blessing and then yeah but our friend of course david from upload vr has testing up uh, i saw him tweeting about it and basically being like load times are a bit better otherwise it's it's the same mm -hmm. uh number seven there are a bunch of games getting delayed let's talk about them or at least features from games being delayed we'll start with the medium the medium has officially been delayed to january 28th 2021 uh it is citing uh the covid 19 situation uh of course there's also the fact that i don't know if you know this uh, uh there's a giant game called cyberpunk coming out on the same day that medium was coming out on and that moved there and they're like you know what we'll take some extra time and we'll move to january 28th so look for medium now uh january 28th uh, Sackboy, a big adventure. The game isn't delayed, but the online co-op has been delayed. Uh, we've made the difficult decision to delay the full online multiplayer functionality within Sackboy, a big adventure. The team has been hard at work to ensure that the online is the best experience it can be for players, and we just need a little more time to get it right. Uh, online multiplayer functionality will instead be coming uh, via a patch by the end of 2020. This no. patch... This patch will also include cross-generation multiplayer where PS4 and PS5 users can play together, uh, game save transfers from PS4 to PS5. Uh, on launch day, you'll still be able to enjoy Sackboy with your household in offline couch co-op party play. Two to four players, uh, two to four player parties can play through the whole game, including unmissable co-op only levels. So there you go. Were you? I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make Michael play this with me then. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I was, make I was playing to do do online play, but I guess. Now I think about it. If I'm going to get a code for this game, probably, then who am I going to play with, with? Play with me? You and me host the PlayStation show together, or I can just play with Michael. You know. <laughs> Uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 has been delayed. Uh, Kerbal Sp I'm reading from James O'Connor at GameSpot. Kerbal Space Program 2, the physics-based 
Space Explorer sequel has officially been delayed or delayed out of 2021. In a post to the game's official forums, creative director Nate Simpson shared the news uh, that the game, initially delayed because of COVID-19 pandemic, is now further away. Kerbal Space Program 2 will release in 2022 instead of fall 2021. Uh, we're working on an immersive technical and creative challenge. When we started this project, we've heard time and time again that this community, uh, that quality is paramount, and we feel the same way. So now 2022 for Kerbal Space Program 2. And yeah. then... I respect the, the far out delay. Hey, man, yeah, get, get way in front of it. You know what I mean? They have, they have a really active community. So, yeah, definitely go out there and explain all that to them. Uh, and then uh, Control Ultimate Edition for next generation platforms has been delayed as well. Remedy tweeted, an update from the development team, Control Ultimate Edition will arrive on next generation platforms early 2021. We want the final quality of the game to be awesome, and so we need a bit more time to work on it. Thank you for under your understanding and patience. Womp womp. Dang. Control Ultimate Edition can't get a break. <laughs> Not at all. Do you think they're delaying it to like fix the the, the issues that they've had? I don't like the PR know. issues. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I don't, I don't know. I think it's just more that it's a crowded time, right? There's so much going on, maybe. And again, you worry about cyberpunk slipping further and further back out there. Like, what? Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they come back. Yeah, and they're like, all right, if we figured it out, if you own Control and all the DLC, you'll be able to go get this. But. Otherwise, lot to see. Yeah. Uh, number eight, there's hope for Fortnite on iOS. Uh, this is uh, Marie Delessandri over at gamesindustry.biz. Epic Games Fortnite may be able to make a comeback on iOS via NVIDIA's GeForce Now. The BBC reported that NVIDIA developed a version of its cloud gaming service for Apple's browser Safari, which would allow players to have access to Fortnite on iOS, all while circumventing the App Store. At the moment, iOS users can't download games using storefronts other than Apple's, but third-party services running in web browsers are not restricted in any way. NVIDIA hasn't revealed when a version of GeForce Now running on iOS would be launched, but the BBC claimed that announcement is expected before the winter holidays. But as far as Fortnite is concerned, the publication pointed out a possible caveat. Epic's Battle Royale hit might still be excluded from the portfolio of games available on Apple's devices from GeForce Now. So some rumblings there to get you back into playing some Fortnite on your Apple device. And then final story of the day, number nine, Square Enix reports, dis Square Enix reports disappointing Avengers sales. Uh, Square had its uh, six month financials ended September 30th. It put out its whole uh, dossier about it, had an investor's call. In the actual PDF, it says, in the digital entertainment segment, the release of major titles, including Final Fantasy VII Remake and Marvel's Avengers, growth in digital sales of catalog titles, and licensing incoming, income that resulted in higher net sales than in the same period of previous fiscal year, as well as a turn of profit for the operating line. All that sounds really good. The numbers are all up when you look at the grid. However, uh, David Gibson, an analyst that attends the Japanese investor meetings and gets to sit in on the Q&As, tweeted this today. Square Enix reported a 6.5 billion yen loss for HD games driven by Marvel's Avengers. Would not say how many sold, but that volumes were 60% of plan. Implies game cost over 100 million to make, but only sold 3 million or so. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Imran was following all this this morning and I was seeing him do it and he was nice enough to drop this in there. He added this, it's not clear if the Avengers sale include October since they were reported as part of the Q&A and not the financial results. So again, they put out these financial results, right? To talk about, hey, these are the end of the six month things. That's the one where I read from the very thing in the beginning of like, oh yeah, things are up. Then during the Q&A, they talked a little bit about it, like, oh no, I guess it's 6.5 billion yen loss on HD games driven by Marvel's Avengers. Like, yeesh. Oh, yeah, that doesn't that, that I so hmm, I'm not surprised and I am surprised at the, at the same time. I'm not surprised that it turns out Marvel's Avengers didn't sell that well because I feel like I'm not seeing many people talk about the game aside from Greg Miller and like hey. a few other people. Um, I am now, surprised. I, I feel like it should have sold more though. Mm -hmm. Like you say that, and I, I you mean continued talk, right? Because Avengers was fucking popping off in the beginning. Everybody was talking about Avengers when it launched. Yeah, but like okay. a week later, I mean, like we, yeah, a week, yeah, one hundred percent. No, one hundred percent. You're right. Yeah, in terms like, of people who stuck around, it's me, Fran, Andrew Goldfarb, and Simon Cardi. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like conversation really dissipated about uh, over Avengers. Oh, real and, quick. And Paul Tassi over at Forbes writes about it all the time too. And I'm I am surprised because I would have assumed that this game would have sold way more and i wonder if it's a timing thing i wonder if this game came out 
last year on the on the heels of Endgame if it would have had a meteoric oh, rise despite its state that it's in. Like because it like the game is playable and like for the most part people like the story and like you can have a fun time with it. But the fact that like I yeah I guess the the, the fact that the game didn't have doesn't have the staying power that I think it, it needed as a games of service and probably still could get down down the road. Um, I. I don't know where this thing stands anymore. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with this game because I would have assumed that it would have been way more successful than it is. Well, yeah. And that was the thing is, I think what's important to call out here, right, is uh, from Dave Gibson's thing here, right? The, that volumes were 60% of playing. Like, what was their fucking plan? Like, what, what, what did they think it was going to sell? Like, what did they think they were going to move on this game? And did they understand what they had in terms of, yeah, it's, uh, games as a service it's not gonna it's coming together you know it's not <laughs> nailing it right now what are we doing and then of course since launch it's fallen directly into the pit that one of games as a service gets fucked up that the pit is where it's like all their plans and roadmaps are out the fucking window everything they said they were gonna do they have not done right like it seemed like they had such a great plan leading into launch with all the war tables all the stuff here's uh kate bishop here's gonna be clint we have this thing we're gonna go and yeah roadmaps change and everything else but it's been the we haven't had a war table since the launch week uh kate bishop slipped out of october and is now kind of very generally out there right uh they're having the sale right now to try to get people to spend money on the marketplace and also they're giving out the rewards package and then it's like even when you read through it right like they're still talking, but not saying anything. We've seen all this is from their uh, War Table Weekly blog number ten from the fourth, so two days ago. We've seen all your comments asking for the ne for the next hero, Kate Bishop, new missions to play, new villains to fight, and new places to explore. We're excited to tell you all about it when the time is right. We appreciate your patience and understanding. And it's like, bruh, the patience and understanding only goes so long. Like you know what I mean? Like mm. what what you talked about the secret the cloning facility. That Fran, remember, of course, infamously got to play by accident, not understanding, like got led into it. And then we they talked about that like two weeks ago when they put out the big update. Like it's coming soon. It's still not here. It's like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? And then again, just have that thing of like, hey, here's what's going on. We stopped working on Kate and Clint to make sure we got all the quality of life things you wanted fixed and yada, yada, yada. Here's what we've done. And like they're putting up the blogs and they're doing streams and stuff, but it's like, they it, exactly what you they didn't probably want to happen or what you would expect not you know, like they've pushed next gen they've run into next gen and everything else now it's like meh, whatever yeah i'm just surprised that it's a game called marvel's avengers and like it's still it's not taking over the world like it i i kind of get where their high expectations for it uh uh would come from sure but yeah they just didn't in terms of what the product is i feel like i feel like they just didn't deliver in like I also feel like timing is weird where we haven't had a Marvel movie in forever. And I feel like the like Marvel's like guys is all is, is always up, right? Like everybody's all, all everybody always loves Marvel all the time. But when you're talking about the last decade of Marvel's like guys, we're in kind of a uh like a come down right now because we just yeah, got but, the best of the best last year. But I think you know the counter argument is that we should move on. We've talked we've talked yeah. Avengers Death. There's like 19 kind of funny podcasts about Avengers. But I think the that is that with that, there would have been a hunger for it. Like if this game would have been fucking fucking superb like can you imagine like mm -hmm. i like w watch what happens next week with miles you know mm -hmm. what i mean like uh, miles is gonna fucking crush because that game is superb and we'll see what happens avengers can it ever make its way back to glory or when are we gonna get any of these characters like i'm still like i don't even know 20 maybe 15 hives away from the platinum that i need to go do i still enjoy playing avengers with my friends but i'm not sitting here telling you it's a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination and even my fandom of it is like why are you not giving me reasons to turn this on? I really thought it was going to be like, oh man, next gen is going to come out and I'll have next gen version of it to play. All right, that didn't happen. Well, fuck, it's, I'm still going to have it on backwards compatible and like right around next gen launches, it, they'll be, I'll, we'll have Kate and we'll be get, getting ready for Clint. Neither of those have happened. All right, well, I'm sure I'll come back for AIM Secret Lab. This thing, that might, where the fuck is the AIM Secret Lab? Like, yeah, get out of here. Ah, tab on neck. Uh, blessing. Great. Isn't that super a bad long. word? Yeah, it's, it's a it's real a, bad it's a word. Curse word. It's a curse word in French. Yeah, yeah one somebody in Montreal ones. right now is like, "What the fuck?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> Quebec loved that one. Uh, I'm excited to see all the comments on this. It, it being happy with my uh, Quebecois uh, accent and saying "tabanac calice," uh, but those yeah. comments are still <laughs> I so don't know far if we can away. Say that word. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops. Where would I go? You'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Do, 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 do
out today. Ord on Switch. Dark Sauce on Xbox One. Uh, Speed 3 Grand Prix on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Uh, Crystal Ortha on Xbox One and PC. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Dirt 5 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Paw Patrol Mighty Pups Save Adventure Bay, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Layer of the Clockwork God on PS4. Dead Dungeon on Xbox One. Persephone on Xbox One. World of Solitaire on Switch. Descenders on Switch. Tropico 6 on Switch. Uh, Memoranda on Xbox One and Switch. Uh, Okana on Extra One on PC. Uh, Filmmaker Ty- Ty- Tycoon on PC. Uh, Dismantle on PC. Time to Stop Time on PC. Trail Boss BMX on Switch. Red Rope Don't Fall Behind on Switch. Chess Minimal on Switch. KDA, KDA All Outs EP is available right now on all major platforms for streaming. Reigns Beyond is now available on Apple Arcade. Little Big Workshop is now available on Google Stadia. New dates for you. Out to Out of Space is on coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, uh, and the Couch Edition on November 25th. Uh, Morbid, the Seven Acolytes, is coming out on December 3rd. And then Shemu 3. Shenmue 3 coming to PC on Steam November 19th. Blessing. Greg. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kinda funny games to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe. Uh, Imran writes in uh, and says, to clarify, to be clear, while the Seagate card is the only Xbox expansion card available at launch, any hardware manufacturer is free to make their own. So it's proprietary in the way that you can't just buy any old SSD, but in theory, there is competition for it. Good note. Yeah, but they'll I'll have to it. pay for like licensing fees, right? Because like you have to imagine that Microsoft owns that design of it. You know what I mean? Kevin, if you want to fight with Imran, you can call Imran and fight with him. All right. All right. Imran, <laughs> He's hey, Imran in the call chat. Kevin right now. He's in the Im- chat. Call just, Kevin right now. He doesn't have Imran, my call Kevin right now and you know argue what? with him. He does have my number. The nanobiologist has breaking news. Assassin's Creed announced their launch day patch and file sizes. Xbox Series X slash S is about 45 gigs. Xbox One is 44 gigs. PlayStation 5 is 45 gigs. PlayStation 4 is 45 gigs. PC is about 45 gigs. Uh, there's uh, that happening, so if you care about that. Um, oof, don't care about that, Chad. Not at all. Uh, nanobiology asks a question Does the PlayStation 5 have HDCP? It does. Uh, oh, somebody, gets, sh- BTN, somebody gave me the, yeah. the, the, the link for the uh, PlayStation VR adapter thing, and you had to enter your PSVR serial number. Yeah, and I don't know if it's worth the effort for me to go get my oh, serial number. Oh, bless and So I all might right, just so, say, fuck so you're it just and calling just me because play it on PS4. You're, you're just calling me because you were told to? Yeah. I'm really just like, don't go off my Okay. Well, yeah. It, it has something to do with the uh, you're, you're wrong, I think, if that was actually you. There's no proof. Okay. That was me, I think. Those okay. The SD or SD thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, there's going to be, like, they're going to have to pay Microsoft for using the design of the, like, whatever the shape is, right? So there's going to be oh, some yeah. sort of, like, extra fees. And then yeah. that means mass manufacturing of a new design means they're going to have to make new machinery and stuff. And, like, the, like it'll take a while for the, the cost to go down. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. You should tell Greg to be less loud because literally headphones off on the table next to me still heard him yelling. Oh, you, you are live. They can hear you. Okay, cool. Greg, be less loud. Cool. All right, I might swing by your house to get that thing that I left there last time. Oh, my God, Imran, I'll never be quiet. I hope everyone hears me. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily uh, for Friday. Uh, Thanks for hanging out with us. Remember, there is all sorts of PlayStation 5 coverage up right now. Kindoffunny.com slash PS5. Please go watch those videos, check them out, and keep your eyes peeled next week, early next week for all manner of more reviews coming your way, streams coming your way, unboxings coming your way. It just doesn't stop around here. Blessing, why don't you tell us who's hosting next week? Uh, who is hosting next week? Next week, Monday. I'm doing this off the top of the dome because I can't find the doc. Monday, it's me and Tim. Tuesday, it's me and Emron. Wednesday, is Greg and Gary Witta. Thursday, is Greg and Tim. And then Friday, it is Greg and me. We'll see if it holds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, we got a post show to do over on Patreon.com slash Games. But until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.